Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we are going to be doing about 30 minutes. Um, as you can, no, you can't see the clock. It is 12, 17 in the p.m. on this December the 18th, and this is 2021. We have come to the end of another year. However, there's been a lot of forecast in the future. Can you see over the rainbow? There are a lot of forecasts. One of those things is, I believe it's Amsterdam. If I'm not mistaken, I saw a video earlier today on my cell phone. I decided to click on it. A uh, gentleman was doing um, a commentary on the new law that was passed in Amsterdam that if you are not vaccinated, you cannot be out in public unless it's for some essential issues, medical, food, that type of thing. Ladies and gentlemen, deja vu, because that's exactly what I saw. When I told you I've seen this, I was there, but that was here in this country. Now, originally, and no, I didn't assume it to be the time that I saw, in 2020 when people were restricted to their homes only for essential business you know going and getting food and that type of stuff what i saw was worldwide what i saw was people not being allowed on the street unless and pay attention i am not joking they had a specific there's some type of a card or something that put them to be out on the street. Other than that, they could not be out and about. That they were checked and that they were using animals to determine whether or not they were sick. Now, if you notice when COVID started, they said that dogs were able to detect the infected. Then we noticed they started using them in airports. I keep telling people we don't have enough time. Now, what I'm gonna do so that you all can understand, because some people think I'm weird. That's fine. A lot of people have been accused of being weird in the past. They've been accused of being all kind of things. So I am in good company. We have the Apostle Paul was accused of being weird. Even Joseph was accused of being weird. I don't have a problem with that. Like I said, I'm in good company. But I'll tell you one thing I'm not. None of you can accuse me of being a liar. Go ahead. Go ahead. Somebody go back the last 10, 15 years and see where I've lied to you about anything. See, as I said before, in order for me to lie to you, I have to be afraid of you. But I'm not afraid of any man or woman. So to keep from lying to people, I just keep my mouth shut. I will choose not to say anything. I learned that a long time ago. If I don't need to lie to you, then I will remain silent. That way you don't have to worry about me misleading you or lying to you. Ladies and gentlemen, I've done two videos talking about police and police and police departments and how police are trained to misrepresent the facts. Now I start the video off talking about how they are essential, that police do a very dangerous job. But what they do is they help the job along. Nobody pays attention. The prosecution is allowed to bring forth presumptions to put you in jail. And by a preponderance of evidence, what they say, what they're saying is by a preponderance of presumptions, See, they, anybody can make something seem like it's overwhelming and it's the truth. Look at all these so-called conspiracy theorists. They take all of these little small facts, put them together, and they tell it to you as if it's the truth. But, you know, I don't pay attention to that bull, I mean, that stuff. I honestly don't pay attention to any of that junk. Everybody's telling me, well, such and such did a video, and, and this person is a doctor, and this person is, I don't know who the, the mother... Please, I don't know who the, these people are. 
I don't trust them because they have some type of a title. They went to somebody's school. They've been working on this for a hundred billion years. That They don't get my trust because of that. So what? They open their mouth. Look at Mr. Fauci. That idiot has more experience than most of the people you guys are talking about. And yet he is one of the people behind this junk being put out into society. He is with the NIH. He's been there for the last four decades, 40 plus years. Anthony Fauci. Now, I liked him when he first, when they first introduced him. I liked his personality and everything. But they played that very good. They made it seem like Trump and him weren't getting along. That Trump attacking the little man. And this little man, this little man who had knowledge. And who is Trump? Trump didn't have the knowledge this little man had. And everybody, everybody went to Fauci's aid, including me. Including me. Ladies and gentlemen, and I knew who he was and is. That man has flip-flopped telling people, hey, no mask, and then telling people mandatory mask. Telling people don't really trust things and telling people you must get vaccinated. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm finding out that there are, because what I've seen, and when I say I was there, when I say I was there, I was walking amongst the communities, going into neighborhoods. I literally, and I am planning on doing this. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm going to do a walkabout during that period when things get so bad that they're piling up bodies on street corners here in America. I'm going to be going about. I'm going to be talking to them. I'm going to be offering some comfort to these people who are about to lose their loved ones, who are about to lose their children. When I tell you, pay attention, ladies and gentlemen, 2015, TTOPP, that name was created as a result of that experience. The Threat Outbreak Preparedness Program. Listen to the title. The Outbreak Preparedness? Ladies and gentlemen, notice how everybody else has been talking about preparedness. If you look at all the movies on Ebola and Outbreak, you keep hearing preparedness. All of these so-called agencies that are running these scenarios, like the Corona scenario, that they did in 2019 of some virus getting out in China and spreading throughout the world and people getting infected. Imagine that. How did they predict the future? And how did I know? Now, I tell you, I know how I know because my God allowed me to know for my benefit, not for yours. Like I said, I was going to get in a lot of trouble <laughs> for telling you all in 2017 about all of this. And before it happened, look at what they did to me. They put me away. Why? Because I couldn't keep telling you what they were getting ready to do. Here I am palm playing them. And then they do it while I am down. And then not only do they put five people in my dorm who are infected, and I catch that disease as a result of them putting them not just in the dorm that I was in, but on the side that I was on. Because, like I said, I've seen it. I had some sort of an idea that maybe muscular dystrophy, myasthenia gravis, maybe that would protect me from this. Well, I'm finding out that it will, not in the way that I thought it would, as if it provided some sort of immunity because I caught COVID twice the second time, a temperature of 106.8. And then after it went down to 99.8, it went right back up to 106.8 again. Then they didn't rush me to no hospital. They didn't give me no IV. At no time were I even considered being given anything other than, pay attention, a Tylenol a day. Now, I want you guys to understand, when I had the malignant hypothermia episode, they gave me a children's Tylenol a day. That's what I received for pain. 
I had blood clots in my kidney. Now, if you don't know what blood clots in your kidneys are, just have somebody tie you down where you can't move and then have them take a hammer while you're looking at them and a nail and have them put it at your big toe and have them slam it as hard as they can while you're watching them. That's the type of pain I was in. I had blood clots in my kidneys, people. When you hear people talking about kidney stones, I had blood clots in my kidneys. That's the type of pain I was in. Every single day for over a month, they had to pump me so much full of Coumadin, a blood thinner, that my family couldn't even come in and touch me. That's what I went through. So pain, I am no stranger or foreigner to pain. Been through it. I'm going to go through it again, know it, see it coming, but I do understand. Let's get back to this scenario, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, I decided not to do any music, any taking you to this website or that website in this particular video, because when I saw that today from, like I said, I believe it was Amsterdam, because uh, I thought it was, or was it Austria? I don't know. I, I knew it was in Australia. I believe it was not Amsterdam. It was Austria. Okay, but I do know about the lockdown and I do know about the individual. And you can find the video, okay, because he was investigating the lockdown and he was talking about, could this perhaps be the start of what the global community is about to do? Ladies and gentlemen, I believe it's exactly what they're about to do because did you not hear? Somebody brought it to my attention. I remember I told you guys the moment that idiot mentioned dark winter, I told all of you. I said he mentioned it three times. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. Three is for emphasis. He said it in October, he said it in November, and then he said it again in January that we're headed for a dark winter. A year ago, ladies and gentlemen, this man said a dark winter, and then they propped him, put him in office. Why? A distraction, people. You know he didn't win nobody's election. Biden wasn't that popular with anybody, and Trump wasn't that unpopular. We know Trump won the election. Your mama know Trump won the election. My mama knew Trump won the election, and she's been dead since 2017. But she knows that Trump won the election in 2020. We know that they messed with the ballots. I don't care. I don't care about Trump. I don't care about Biden. I don't care about no stupid presidency. Those idiots don't run my life. They don't run my world. I don't interfere with them, and they haven't interfered with me. I ain't got no problem with the mother. Ladies and gentlemen, please understand. I don't have no problem with the, I'll take care of this. These are some unwanted programs that the system is finding, and I'll have to. No, we ain't applying that. Y'all going to wait for me. I'm going to take a look at that later. All right. I'm doing a virus scan, and because I'm uploading uh, programs to this, I'm having it checked to see what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. Let me continue. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't care about politics. I never have. I am grateful that I am one of Jehovah's Witnesses so that I can't get involved in politics. As I told you, Ms. Maxine Waters wanted me to be a part of that group of so-called up-and-comers. Uh, what's his name? Dang it, I can't think of his name, but he's a black, I think he's a black senator, but I'm not certain if he's either a black senator or a black politician, Booker or something like that. Individuals like him, those were the so-called new, so-called black caucus that they were getting ready to create. That was their vision. They accomplished that. Maxine Waters and the others like her accomplished that. That started in California, people. That didn't start in New York or in Washington, D.C. That was going on in the 80s that they were putting people 
in office, people who would owe them favors, people who would toe the party line. I ain't got time for that. No, I'm not saying what they did was wrong. I'm not saying what they did was right. I'm just saying I ain't got time for that. That ain't me. I, I, you can't control me. I'm not going to allow myself to be controlled. I'm not going to owe you a favor in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have any credit cards. Well, you do have one credit. Just shut up. It's not a credit card. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I don't have any credit card. I don't borrow on credit. Yes, I've had credit cards in the past, but I've always paid them off at the end of the month. I never had a credit card that I let it go on and on and on and didn't pay. Now, I did have a situation with Capital One. Capital One sat up there and I paid them and they said I never paid them and I had proof that I paid them and they said I didn't pay them. And I said, you mother... And what I did, all right, I didn't pay you. My credit card had a $10,000 limit. I owed $40 on it, according to them. By the time I got finished, I owed $15,000 on that mother... Okay? I ain't got time for y'all. That's better than taking y'all to court. I don't use my credit for anything, so it didn't matter that they put that amount on my credit. They never gotten a dime from me, and they never will. That was more than 20 years ago, so I ain't worried about that, but that's what I'm trying to tell you. I don't borrow anything on credit because I pay my debts. I have some debts that are outstanding, and I'm trying to correct that. And they're outstanding because they're with people. They're not with corporations. And so let's do some talking. 16 minutes, ladies and gentlemen, and 50 seconds. Let's do some talking. I'm going to explain tax credits to you. I'm going to explain the arbitration process to you. I hope that some of you get it, and I hope that some of you understand that this is your solution, especially for when they do a crackdown, especially for when they do the austerity program. Ladies and gentlemen, they're gonna come after you for your debts. You need to understand they're gonna come after you for your debts. Many of you are not gonna be employed, why? The reason why you're not gonna be employed is because there are not gonna be any jobs. Everybody's gonna be stuck at home. The people who are gonna be able to go out and travel and be about, ladies and gentlemen, that's how they're gonna control you. Because they're gonna make it a privilege for you to be so-called free. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. That's why they have the FEMA camps. Because that's going to be for those of you who don't want to do what you're supposed to do. They're going to have those individuals put you in cages. You will capitulate. When I did the video about capitulating, I'm talking about capitulating to my God. But those of you who ain't paying attention, you will capitulate. You think you're going to get guns? Please. They've been creating weapons for urban combat. They're coming into the communities with their military. You don't believe me? Go ahead and say you heard it here first. When everybody else starts talking about this in a couple of months, not a couple of years, it's not going to take them years to implement this. They said Omicron. Now they're expecting the virus to mutate again. And guess what? All of you people who have not gotten vaccinated, you're the culprit. You are the culprit. Well, as the guy said in that video, of what's going on in Austria, when he spoke in that video, he said he was questioning people. He says, well, if the unvaccinated are so terrible, then how come nobody's talking about the fact that even individuals who are vaccinated can still spread the disease? What? What? People are vaccinated can spread the disease, so why are they going after the unvaccinated? Why are they saying the unvaccinated is so much a threat? Ladies and gentlemen, if people who are vaccinated can spread the disease, if people who are so-called vaccinated, if people who are so-called vaccinated can spread the disease, why are the unvaccinated the supreme threat? They're overwhelming our hospitals. Ladies and gentlemen, the hospitals were overwhelmed for over a year and a half, according to you. You keep talking about overwhelming the hospitals. You're putting people on incubators and giving them remdesivir. You're overwhelming your own hospitals. You know remdesivir is the thing that's killing the people, but you keep giving them that stupid drug, remdesivir. You know what the side effects are, and you claim those are COVID side effects. And now somebody gets Omicron. People have been dying of Omicron, people. But what they're saying is they died with Omicron. Go ahead and look at the guy who died on Monday. He died with Omicron. He didn't die of Omicron. 
they're very careful with their words. Ladies and gentlemen, social media is censored. I'm now hearing TikTok. They're talking about there's been some spread of some school violence thing in TikTok, and now they're going to clap down on the videos on TikTok. Ladies and gentlemen, they went after TikTok when Trump was in office, and now they're going after TikTok again. You must understand, TikTok is not an American company, even though technically it's been da 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 whatever. TikTok is mostly China. It is YouTube in China. TikTok. I don't like TikTok. I, I, I will give you my word. I don't like TikTok. I think TikTok is childish. The same as I thought about YouTube when YouTube started. You've heard me tell the story of what I thought about YouTube and how I eventually ended up on YouTube. But I'm on the information side of YouTube. Just like when the very first um, World Wide Web Internet site we created was .org, meaning organization and information. Then they had the .info later, but it was only .com, .net, and .org. Those were the only three, and .gov, those were the only three you could get in America. Those. And then they came up with all the other domain. Now we have .x. Ladies and gentlemen, SACOM domain .x should be up within the next month. Okay, the new domains have finally gone up. And I just noticed something. This was a problem before where the internet issue was a problem. I'll be taking care of that later. I know what the issue is. And so that'll be taken care of later when I upload this video. Let's get back to the understanding so that you guys will get it. And we'll talk about credit and debt so that you understand it. Because a lot of people, this is simple to me, but it is simple to some of you. So I'm going to try to break it down so that you understand it. In 1933, why is 1933 so important? Ladies and gentlemen, it could have been 1934, it could have been 1931, it could have been 1929. No, it couldn't have. 1933, because of the 33 degree masonry, it could not have been any other year. Remember, the depression started in 1927. That's when it officially started. Well, technically, the official report was 1929. But no, it actually started in 1927. 1929 is when the crash started. Then, by 1933, they're just now coming out of it, ladies and gentlemen. The rest of the world is just now starting to come out of that so-called depression. But what do they do? 1933, they came up with a new deal, and you can have it now for just all of your gold and gold bullion and gold coins. A new deal, ladies and gentlemen. This is the new deal. The bankers wrote a letter to Hoover. Was it Hoover? I don't know. It's not the J. Edgar Hoover. It's the... I, I don't know who the president was in 19... Who uh, Roosevelt uh, seceded. But the president, whoever was president in 1929, that individual coming out of office in 1933 wrote a letter to the incoming president, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, saying, Hey, there's an overwhelming crisis, there's a run on the banks. We need to declare a national emergency and a banking holiday. And he gives that letter. It's sitting on the desk of the new president when he comes into office. And three days later, show you how scripted this was. Three days later, March 6, 1933, he issues a proclamation. Presidential proclamation, 2038. Uh, was that on the, I think that was on the 3rd, sorry, March 3rd. Then on March 6th, he issues the March 9th, I mean, the so-called thing that led to the March 9th, 1933 Act, Presidential Proclamation 2039. And then two days after that, he issues another Proclamation 2040. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. Presidential Proclamation 2038, 2039, 2040. Those are the ones that led to all of what we're going through right now. 
this was the issue. The fiat currency wasn't an issue then, ladies and gentlemen. It was pretty much non-existent. There was no fiat currency then. What do you mean? Fiat currency is currency that is backed by nothing and has no substance. At that point, the money was backed by gold. Backed by gold certificates, backed by gold. You could literally take your cash and redeem it for gold. It was cash. You could walk around with it. It had value. You gave somebody a dollar bill. It was worth a dollar in gold. That's why bank robberies were so big at that time. Because people weren't robbing them for gold anymore. That was the 1800s. No, now they were robbing them for the paper. Got to get that paper. But then the government said, that's all right. We're going to gonna take all your gold, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to do the biggest bank robbery in history. We're going to steal your gold before it even makes it to the bank. And if you got it in the bank, we're going to take it from there, too. Ah, don't y'all worry. We're going to give y'all a way out. We're going to give y'all something that y'all can appreciate. We're not going to rob you blind. That's going to come later. What we're going to do is we're going to make a deal with you. If you give us your gold, we're going to give you this paper. We're going to have it have the same value. We're going to create these trust accounts for you, these new contracts. And we're going to give you securities. We're going to take care of your health. Should you fall sick, should you fall in need, we're going to provide insurance to make sure that you're covered. So they came up with all the Securities Act, Social Security, Social Security Insurance. Man, they came up with everything to take care of your needs. Everybody wants to talk about welfare. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not about welfare. You paid for these things. By turning in your gold, you have already paid for these things. Have you not heard of prepaid? Everything is prepaid? Well, that's what people are talking about. Many of them don't even realize that's what they're talking about when they say everything is prepaid. They can't even explain to you why everything is prepaid. Ladies and gentlemen, it's prepaid because you gave up your value. Remember, with every contract, there must be value and consideration well you gave up your value you didn't receive consideration but yes you did because the government took into consideration this and that and thus they took care of your necessities how did they do that well they created these corporations these all cap names with social security numbers or serial numbers, they created these EIN numbers for you. We've shown you where an EIN number and a social security number is exchangeable, interchangeable. And ladies and gentlemen, they said, hey, go out there and we need you to support the economy. We're creating this new thing called an economy. And in this economy, in order for this to work, we have to work together, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all have to go out there and do your part to support our economy. Go back and listen to the news and see how often you hear about individuals helping to support society, helping to be an active and productive member of society. You have to participate in society. When you refuse or rebuff participation in society, what do they do? Do they not haul you into jail and say that you're a blight on a society, that you're interfering with society? that you're interfering with commerce and they put you away until you learn your lesson and then they let you back out. That's why you owe a debt to society because they created this new matrix called the economy. And everybody's going about participating in the matrix. They're born into the matrix at this point. They're attached to the system. Pay attention. Go back and look at the matrix. Individuals are attached to the system. Then they, they want to be unplugged. Sorry, that's MTV. You can't be unplugged, especially not now. All of those who attempt to be unplugged, 
or who attempt to unplug someone from the system, from the economy, have agents come after them. Go ahead. Tell me I'm wrong. They have agents come after them, and they have agents attack them. And when they try to defend themselves, like in the Matrix, the agents take them out. Ain't no dodging, no bullets. Not in this Matrix. Let's continue so that you all understand. The Matrix, I don't care what the idiots say, was letting you know exactly what was going on in society. That's why I said when it came out, and my best friend was sitting there with me, I said, and I literally whispered to him, I said, they let this stuff out into the public? Oh, I don't believe this. And then at the end, I said, you don't understand. That's what's really going on. I said, and they let that information out into the public. He didn't understand. Um, he was my best friend, but he was 13 years my younger. And he was only, no, I can't say he was only my best friend because it is. He was my best friend because he lived next door to my best friend who had died. He and I became friends about eight years after my best friend died. And we remained friends up until the point to where we allowed something to interfere with our friendship. And that was money, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, it, it's, it's difficult to explain. Anyway, that's for another story, another day, another time. Ladies and gentlemen, The Matrix, a pivotal film. And because so many people saw the light in The Matrix, they didn't see everything. As I'm explaining to you now, they, but the Matrix did tell you about how everybody being plugged into the system. Football, basketball, baseball, hockey, soccer, gambling, sex, bars, fast cars, television, commercials. Those are all the women in the red dress. Those are all the distractions, ladies and gentlemen. The Matrix has a lot of distractions, a lot of women in the red dress. Remember Mouse? I designed that. All of these are designed. These are not natural natural phenomena. Do you know, and I want you to pay attention, I don't care about any of you getting upset because you've been matronized. Matricized? Matronized. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, this whole sex history where everybody's out there fornicating themselves that's not normal go back to the 50s and 30s and 20s and 1800s that's not normal when you hear about prostitution and all of that stuff that was so shunned on that was done at night that was done at night people that wasn't out in the open Homosexuality it was not out in the open because that junk is not natural, people. Prostitution, not natural. They had to introduce that to you all slowly. Look how long it took them. And they're patient. Go back. Look at society in the 50s, in the 60s, how they wouldn't even show a man and woman sleeping in the same bed because society would not accept that. They had to slowly indoctrinate you to accept that junk. Homosexuals on television? No! Two men kissing on television? Impossible! Go back to the 70s, 80s, and even the 90s. They made a joke out of it. Two men would kiss each other on the lips, and they would make a joke out of it. So that it, they made it seem like it was funny. But now it's not funny anymore. Now it's normal. That's our society, ladies and gentlemen. That's our matrix. Our matrix is indoctrination. See, they test you out to see if, you, uh, if you're going to bite. I had a young man tell me that he was invited to a bachelor party. When he get to the bachelor party, it's a man! And he's got something that he's swinging! And I told him, why didn't you leave? Well, I did. I was just, I, no, why didn't you leave? I said, do you not know that the reason why your so-called friend invited you to that bachelor party is because he wanted to see your reaction? 
I said, did you notice how everybody else who was there was accepting? Nobody got offended. Nobody was upset. I said, because he was letting you know what his lifestyle was about. And he was trying to test you to see if you would be accepting. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I did stupid things like that in the past, so I could see right through that. I could see the whole scene. Like I said, my mind puts everything together. It's a puzzle. My mind takes all the little pieces, and I can see the whole story. I could even see the people sitting there laughing. And I told them, I said, there were people there laughing and joking and acting like it was no big deal. I said, nobody got up. And... Ladies and gentlemen, I guarantee you, with all of my heart, I would have got up and left and I never would have spoke to that person again. You don't play on my conscience like that. You don't test me like that. I don't play that. Well, didn't you used to have a lifestyle? You better believe it. But there are certain things I would never play. I am not a cliche. You do not put me in the same mix as some, anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, I say this to let you know that in our society, things are introduced to us subtly to see what our reaction will be. I can tell you that there are many things that I should have walked away from from the very beginning, but I stayed. It bothered me at first, but I stayed. And then later it became acceptable. That's our society. Stop letting them do that to you. Back to what the government did in 1933. So now that the government has get, gotten people to voluntarily it was voluntary, people, just like taxes. It was voluntary. They voluntarily gave up their gold. Well, it was under the threat. It doesn't matter what it was under. Nobody was forced at the time. People did it voluntarily, like vaccination. Nobody is forced to get vaccinated. Unless you're in Australia and an Aborigine. Yeah, but we're not in Australia, are we? Well, yeah, but you said nobody is forced. Not yet. Nobody is forced. Ladies and gentlemen, people are volunteering to participate in a drug trial. Go back. This is an emergency provision that allowed this junk to be touted as medicine. Go ahead. Let somebody argue with me that it's not under emergency that the so-called mRNAs are introduced in our society and they're told, we are told that they are effective. Really? Do you know why the people who have, pay attention, contracted COVID and they have been vaccinated only have mild symptoms? Because the symptoms for COVID are mild. The problem is the people who catch it do all the coughing. <laughs> and it's uncontrolled coughing for the most part. The only problem is they don't realize that the more coughing they do, that valve in their throat, it doesn't close all the way. So when they're sleeping on their back, the liquid saliva goes into their lungs. That stays there. Do you know how bacteria is formed? through moisture, humidity. Well, that's exactly what you get with the body heat and that liquid in the lungs and that oxygen in the lungs, you get the buildup of bacteria. Do you know what that's called? Mommy, I know, can I answer his question? Can, can a mommy, can I answer his question? It, it's called pneumonia, sir. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. That's pneumonia. And these individuals are getting pneumonia. You see, the other individuals, the ones who only have mild symptoms, they treat them in advance, give them the antibiotics so that they don't catch pneumonia. But the ones who are not vaccinated, they allow them to catch pneumonia. Like they did me. You guys understand, I caught pneumonia twice with COVID. Pneumonia. Had I not been through pneumonia at least four other times in the past, Yes, the first time was serious. 
I mean, it was serious to the point to where if the nurse had not worked with me, I probably would not be here. But like she said, pay attention. This nurse, I, I think her name was probably Nurse Kathy, if I'm not mistaken, but I don't know because I don't remember her name. I remember her because her words to me, oh no, you are not dying on me. You are not dying on me. Her exact, uh, she was serious, okay? She wasn't just an ordinary nurse. She was, you mother, uh, oh, no, you know, she, that was the type of nurse she was. And she was there for me. Ladies and gentlemen, this nurse came into that room. She literally sat there with me, talked to me, fed me. She cared. She had a bedside manner. She made me feel good. As a matter of fact, when my friend and I were playing my Sega Genesis in my critical care unit, ladies and gentlemen, I'm the only one in critical care who's got people visiting and we're playing video games and talking on cell phones. Yes, we had cell phones in critical care unit. That was before these all these other cell phones and they talked about cell phone signals that was analog so cell phone signals back then did not it was analog did not interfere with any of the equipment but that was me playing cards playing dominoes in my critical care unit room i had a suite the room that i was in was big enough for eight bits that's how big the room was because I had insurance. If I hadn't had insurance, I probably wouldn't be here. I digress, ladies and gentlemen. Let us continue with the Matrix and how they did the system. I apologize. The government said to the people, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen of America, you've given us your gold and now it's time for us to carry out our side of the bargain. If you go out and you're productive and active members of society, we will leave you alone. You will be able to raise your families. You'll be able to accumulate wealth. And we will provide all the things you need. We'll provide infrastructure. We'll provide roads. We'll even provide homes for you. All you have to do is help to produce the materials needed for us to provide this and we'll employ your sons and your daughters to help get these things accomplished. Go back and look at the 30s, 40s, and 50s, how they had all of these factories and government organizations and government jobs and infrastructure and freeways and building plants. Go ahead. Do your research on how the freeways got started. They claimed it was for the military. It was until the 1930s. Then they called it infrastructure. Look, I ain't did the research on it. Go, you do the research and tell me I'm wrong. I told you, I know what I know. Never even thought about that part before, but I know what I know. And the people said, thank you, government. We knew you guys would take care of your end of the bargain. Government said, hey, no, we're going to need some of your men because there's an idiot over in Germany. He's trying to interfere with this new economy. He doesn't want this new economy. He's trying to interfere with your way of life. And so people volunteered. When Johnny come marching home again, hurrah, hurrah. And all the Johnnies went marching. And then they dropped these two bombs. And all of a sudden there was celebration. Two million people lost their lives instantaneously. But there was celebration in America. There was celebration in America. Two million people lost their lives. Well, if you had to die to save billions, ladies and gentlemen, two million people lost their lives within a matter of seconds. And people celebrated. Well, that's because government was keeping its promise. 
You see, the government promised that if you participated, that they'll provide for your necessities and they would defend against all threats to pay attention, not the constitution, but to the new economy. The system was okay. Everybody was doing okay. There was no major problems. Some people were struggling because they didn't know how the system operated. And so they couldn't maneuver in a system, but the people who knew how to maneuver the system, those people were up in commerce. I mean, they were getting things done. They were able to buy homes and cars and everything. The government said, hey, you guys, we can't tell you this. You're supposed to know this. Because you're participating in a society, you're tax exempt. But we can't tell this to you. The reason why we can't tell this to you is because that part you're supposed to know because we explained it at the beginning. We told you we'll take care of your necessities. You have already paid. You can't be made to pay taxes. You've already paid. All of your everything is prepaid. But taxation is a voluntary system in America now. We can't really tell you that. We can only say that slightedly so that you don't pick up on it. So I'm sorry, John Q and Jane Q public. We can't tell you that when you go to an employer and you get hired, you don't realize that you are signing an application to be employed, a contract that you accept and the employer accepts and you guys have a contract. Do you not know that that makes you a subcontractor and not an employee? Yes, I know some of the paperwork says employee, but you really need to understand under the law, you are a subcontractor. And as a subcontractor, when you file your taxes, you need to be writing off all of those business expenses, everything that it costs you for doing business. You need to be documenting that on your tax return. And you need to be filing as a sole proprietor. We're gonna give you a hint that you should be filing as a sole proprietor, a subcontractor, or what they call this so-called gig worker, because we're gonna put that information on the same tax form that you file all the time, the 1040. And we're going to create another one that's right next to it. It's going to say 1041. Remember, we gave all of you estates when you helped us with this deal. When we created all these securities for you, we created these estates for you. That's why you have a Social Security Trust Fund, because we created an estate for you. So you really should be operating through your estate, like all the rich people do. They all operate through their trust fund and their estate. Their trust fund takes care of all of their bills. I don't know why you didn't learn from Biff and Susan. I mean, they use their trust funds for everything. And Biff, shh, please, Biff ain't never worked a day in his life. But Biff, trust fund and his estate pays for everything. Ladies and gentlemen, you should become like Biff and Susan and Brittany, and you all, Brittany likes Spears, Brittany, and you all should be utilizing your trust fund. I don't know how to utilize my trust fund. Well, the first thing you do is you start doing everything as a sole proprietor. You start writing off everything, your fuel, your expenses, everything. You start, when you do your taxes, you only count income after expenses. You don't count income before expenses. Yes, they're not going to be happy with that. But what you don't realize is your living expenses are non-taxable. The only expense is income. Income is that which you actually bring in that's over and above your expenses. That's your gross. That's your, I made a profit. Okay. That's income. Your profit is an income. 
the same thing, that's why businesses deal with revenue. If a business does not bring in revenue, and if it does not have a profit, then it's considered net operating losses, or pay attention. The reason why it's called net operating losses is because that's their expenses, their operating losses their expenses for doing business have you heard well that's the cost of doing business yes they can write off the cost of doing business and they do again that's why jc pennies is still in business did you hear what i just said that's why jc pennies is still in business because it writes off its losses and it has losses every year. Macy's still in business, has losses every year. The Federated Group has losses every year and these organizations are still in business. How is that possible, ladies and gentlemen? Because when they write it off, the government does exactly what the government has promised. Do you know what the government has promised you if you write off that junk? The government has promised you a credit we're going to credit your account. Why is a credit necessary? Well, if you go back to March 9, 1933, the Congress in their session, they told you, they said that the money, the Federal Reserve banknotes will be worth a hundred cents on the dollar, dollar for dollar, because it is backed by the full faith and credit of the nation, which means backed by 100% on the dollar because it is backed by the credit of the nation. Pay attention, people. Backed by 100%, 100 cents, 100% per cent, C E N T, 100 cents on the dollar because it is backed by 100 it is backed by the dollar of the nation, which is credit. You see, it is backed by credit. Credit is lawful money. How can you prove credit is lawful money, sir? Oh, I can prove credit is lawful money by the entire process. Nobody pays attention. I go to a bank. Hey, what up, banker? Oh, what up, homie? Hey, banker, I got some money I need to deposit. Oh, sure, give me that money you got. Just give it to you. Yeah, just give it to me. You give me the money, I'm going to deposit it into your account, and I'm going to credit your account. Really? You're going to credit my account? Yeah, I'm going to credit your account. That's what we got to do. Uh, y y look, here's law right here. 12 U.S.C. 411. It says you bring it to the Federal Reserve or the United States Treasury and we redeem it for you. You're giving us a coupon and we're going to redeem it in lawful money, which is the full faith and credit of the nation. I'm, see, I'm sorry, I, I, I spoke. I, I shouldn't have told you that part. Okay, it is the credit. We give you credit. That's lawful money. Congress made credit lawful money in 1933 when they backed everything by the full faith and credit of the nation. So credit is lawful money, and we're going to give that to you. Just, okay, go in Google and type in, when I deposit money to my bank account, the bank credits my account. And you will see, or ask, call your bank and say, hey, if I deposit money into my bank account, how do, you, how, how do I get the money in my account? Do you credit my account? Yeah, we credit the account. Oh, thank you. That's all I needed to know. Full faith and credit of the nation. Everything is credit, everyone. There is no money. It has been credit ever since 1933. Lawful money is credit. Now, many people have not understood 12 U.S.C. 411. Go back and read it. It says the Federal Reserve notes are to be taken to the Treasury or the Federal Reserve Bank. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. All financial institutions are membered banks. They are part of the Federal Reserve. So you take those dollars to the bank. Oh, man, you can take that to the bank. And the bank credits your account. Dollar bills are not money. It says these notes are legal tender, good for the payment of all debts. They are coupons. They are redeemable coupons. Go back and look at 12 U.S.C. 411. You redeem it in lawful money when you take it to a Federal Reserve membered bank. 
and they give you credit. Sometimes they'll even give you a cashier's check. Imagine that. But they credit your account. You receive lawful money. Now, hey, wait, 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 wait. If you want to withdraw your credit, instead of using your credit the right way, they give you credit cards, people. <laughs> Pay attention. Instead of using the credit the right way, if you want to withdraw it, they're going to give you coupons. Because there's no money. It's only credit. So let's bring it down. Ladies and gentlemen, it is 56 minutes or 55 minutes and 34 seconds. Now we're going to talk about arbitration. Bradley Christopher Stark, he figured something out. You see, arbitration is something the courts can't control. They've been trying to control it. Oh, God, they've been trying to control it. Even they tried to control it on a state level. The Federal Arbitration Act does not allow them to control it. The Federal Arbitration Act was not written for you. But because arbitration was a common law right, and this is not a court right, the court rulings are not common law. Somebody just started that junk and that junk took off. <sighs> common law was the people were allowed to sit up there and get in the contract and they were allowed to go to a third party and say, we need you to settle this, uh, this disagreement. We have a disagreement. Children do it with their parents all the time. Mommy, uh, Johnny and I got a problem. I gave Johnny this and Johnny da 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 da. I know he did not gave him this and he gave me and no did it. And the parent says, okay, hold on, hold on, okay, now I'm going to give you both a chance to speak. And then whatever I decide, y'all agree that that's what you're going to do, right? Okay, yeah, mommy. I Okay, mommy. Okay. All right. What, what's going on? I know you first. Why did he go first? Because I said he get to go first. You said you're going to go by what I decided, right? So sit down and shut up before I sit up there and just make a decision and you be in the losing seat. Okay. All right, go ahead, Johnny. Ladies and gentlemen, arbitration is common law. Everybody and their grandmama can do arbitration. That's why in Bradley Christopher Stark's case, the arbitrator was a young lady. Was it an arbitration association? Was it an arbitration uh, registered with the state or anything like that? So when the courts are saying things like, TechCom is not a valid arbitration association, on the state level, no, they're not. Because state levels, you have to be registered. We're not state arbitrators. We're subcontractors for SAA. SITCOM Arbitration Association is a federal arbitration association. There is no registration requirement of federal arbitrators or federal arbitration associations. So when SITCOM issues an arbitration award, go ahead and type in case text that arbitrators are judicial officers. Just type that in the case text and look at the case law that shows that arbitrators are judicial officers and they have immunity. That's Bradley Christopher Stark discovered. He knew what he was doing. Give the young man some credit because that is research I would not have done. That's why I said I give Bradley all the credit in the world. We're, we're getting ready to take care of this for all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, here's arbitration so that you get it because many people are not getting it and oh, you're gonna get it. When you have an arbitration award, you do not need to go to a court to get it confirmed. Go back and look at Section 9 of the Federal United States Federal Arbitration Act. Section number 9 explicitly says that you may go to the court and get it confirmed. It doesn't say you have to go to the court and get it confirmed. Ladies and gentlemen, with the arbitration awards issued by the subcontractors for the Sitcom Arbitration Association, and that's why everybody's a subcontractor. Whenever they work for me, everybody's a subcontractor. Why? Because we want you filing as a sole proprietor. We want you writing off your debt. Why? For this reason, this reason only. When Sitcom Arbitration Association issues an award through its subcontracting arbitrators, that award is valid six 
Uh, excuse me, you pay attention, sorry, I, I misspoke, I was going ahead of myself. That award is valid upon its face. It's a claim of debt. Tell any other party they owe money. Six months after, well, it's actually 190 days, not 180, because 10 days for the person to receive a copy of the notice, plus six months. Six months plus 10 days, 190 days. Six months plus 10 days after the award is issued, you simply say, you know what? I'm going to forgive these people. I'm going to stop trying to collect on this debt. I'm going to forgive it. People be like, why would I want to forgive what they owe me? Because by law, the moment you forgive, the moment you notify them, I'm forgiving this debt. I am not holding this against you no more. It becomes a tax credit. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you who have arbitration awards against anyone, Notify the person that you're forgiven the debt. You know the scriptures. If you forgive your brothers their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Well, since 1933, the United States government has said the same thing to you. They said, ladies and gentlemen of America, if you forgive your brother their debt, that's why this note is legal tender, good for the payment of all debts, both public and private. Forgive your brother his debt, that private debt. Forgive him, please. Don't require him to give you one of these coupons. You don't need the coupon. We're going to give you the lawful money automatically. We're going to give you a credit that you can use to offset your debts. So we are going to forgive your debts with these credits. Remember the scriptures say your heavenly father will also forgive you of your debts if you forgive your neighbor, your brother. That's a private debt. That note, that's legal tender, good for the payment of all debts, both public and private. Pay attention, people. The government gave you a way to eradicate debt to discharge debt. Everybody's talking about discharging debt and you don't see that six months after you have a debt with somebody, if you simply say, I forgive you, you don't owe me this debt no more. Ladies and gentlemen, all of you, no more lawsuits. Just simply forgive the person their debt and you'll get the automatic tax credit. Automatic, six months after you forgive the debt, or excuse me, six months after the debt is initiated, you simply give a letter forgiving the debt. Many of you have not done that. Many of you have not done that. Until you do that, you can't do the 1099s. Until you do, you cannot do the 1099C. Send a letter forgiving the debt. Once you send that letter forgiving the debt, and it has been six months since the award or six months since the debt was incurred, and you've given notice that the debt is owed, then you get an automatic credit. Automatic. You don't have to ask anybody. You just have to document it. You follow me? I hope so. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you with arbitration awards and arbitration contracts, the SITCOM Arbitration Association has sent out an award and that award notifies them that this is a debt and that they owe this and they have 30 days to pay that debt. Six months after that notice is received, it's when you send out your letter. If you didn't do it and you had an award and you went to court, and even if the court ruled against you, ladies and gentlemen, that doesn't get rid of the debt. Even if the court ruled against you, and even if they dismissed it with prejudice, that doesn't get rid of the debt. The court can't eradicate a private debt. They don't have that authority. Only you can do that. Only you can put out forest fires. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, 
do yourself a favor. Send out your notice that you forgive the individual of the debt. Once you send out that notice that you forgive that individual of a debt, and it has been six months since they received the award from the arbitrator, then you receive an automatic tax credit. All it takes is you forgiving your neighbor their debt so that government could forgive you of your debt and give you a tax credit to offset your debt. Now, here is the unique part. You can also, let's say they say you still owe them some money. Well, you can now take that credit you just received because it's yours. And you can literally pay attention. Some of you are not going to be paying attention, but you need to pay attention to what I'm about to say. You can sell that tax credit to that financial institution. Wait, I could sell it to them and offset my debt? Yes, but you don't sell it to them. You give them or transfer the credit to offset the debt. You have the right to offset any debt with any entity. So do yourself a favor. Do a letter of notice of transfer of offset or in, in order to offset the outstanding debt. Notice of transfer to offset an outstanding debt. Just create your own template. Notice of transfer to offset an outstanding debt. Ladies and gentlemen, do not do this haphazardly. You have to fully document it. If you don't, then your process will not work. By sending them that notice to offset that debt, there was nothing they can say. Well, we don't understand. Oh, well, you were in an agreement with me. And I sent you a notice of conditional acceptance. And you did not opt out within the time frame the law required. And because you did not opt out, too bad. Because by not opting out, you were under obligation and you did not fulfill your obligation, you ended up in default. There was an arbitration hearing. You failed to produce evidence that you were not in default and the arbitrator ruled against you. Well, that constituted a debt and six months of non-payment, I forgave your debt. Filed a 1099 with the IRS and so you're forgiven. Oh, but I'm offsetting the balance against what you claim I owe. And so here is the credit for what you claim I owe so that you can balance your books. Because I forgive you. Just that simple, ladies and gentlemen. It really is that simple. You're going to have to go back and listen to that to understand what the government has done for you. Like I said, all of you are tax exempt. And if you understood how debt operates, because there are, the banks don't deal in debt. The banks deal in credit and debit, but they don't deal with debts. The banks don't handle any debts whatsoever. That's why they send all debts to a collection agency. The banks do not deal with debt. They deal with credit and debits because they are a cruel method agency. Ladies and gentlemen, when you do your taxes, you will send a form 31 15 to the IRS, letting them know that you're doing the accrual method from now on. You're not asking them for permission. You're going to follow it to sole proprietor. I'm using the accrual method. And you just literally offset your debt. Now, we were telling people to use things like um, QuickBooks. And, oh, I'm not going to do any demonstrations in this video, but I have a copy of QuickBooks Pro. You don't necessarily have to use QuickBooks. You can do the math yourself. You just create a ledger. On one side of the ledger, you put the amount that they owe, and then you put another column, other side. And so one of them is debit, the amount they owe, and then the other one is credit, the amount you're offsetting. The debit is a negative, the credit is a positive. And then you put what it equals. Well, a negative and a positive always cancel each other out. And so, in the case, if they owe $50,000 and 
you credited them a hundred thousand dollars, then the adjustment would be a positive or negative fifty thousand dollars. But if it's fifty thousand dollars minus fifty thousand dollars, then it'll be zero. So you use the accrual method. You don't have to the accrual method is not as complicated as they make it. The accrual method is literally balancing the books. You just create two different ledgers, one credit, one debit. Just that simple. I know they try to make it seem like it's more complicated than that. That's because they don't want you doing it. The accrual method is not something you have to go to school to do. The accrual method is basic subtraction and addition. SACOM on Monday will end its recruitment because we're bringing in individuals to help with this process because this is what SACOM is going to be doing for people, helping them to offset their debt. Nobody else is doing this for anybody because, sorry, very few people understand the simplicity of our current system in America. It's called the economy, ladies and gentlemen, and it's the economic matrix. Go ahead and look that up. Economic matrix. Why do they even use the word matrix when it comes to economics? Money. Financial matrix. These are phrases that I'm mentioning right now, but I guarantee you you'll find them in Google. I've never heard them before, never heard anybody use them before, but I guarantee you they are phrases that have been used. Economic matrix, financial matrix. I guarantee you. Why do they do that? Why did they call it the matrix? Man, if only you guys pay attention. So it's okay to remain plugged in. It's okay. Remember, Neil was able to operate within the matrix and outside the matrix. The only way he could do that is because he was plugged in at one time. Because he was plugged in at one time. So he's able to operate within and operate without. Really is that simple. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the video that we're talking about the police that will be up shortly. Um, I don't know. Uh, for the last couple of weeks, there have been people staking out my house. Literally parking <laughs> outside the uh, range of the cameras. And not hiding the fact that they're there. Like I said, there are no, there is no reason for them to be parked anywhere near my property. There's nothing there. So nobody should be parked there. You know, that's like somebody driving along a desert road and parking when somebody has broke down and they park a mile away and just watch them, you know, you wouldn't think that was suspicious, would you? No, I definitely wouldn't think that was suspicious. Wait, how many times they did it? In the last week, three times. Three times? Yes, including yesterday. The guy stayed there for an hour and a half. An hour and a half? That's correct. Oh, man, they on your jock. I know. I know I'm a jock. No, I mean, they, well, anyway, we ain't going to talk about that. But that's, that's what they, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, now that you understand that the arbitration awards are much more than you going and trying to make somebody pay, everybody wants to make their brother pay. Stop trying to force your brother to pay. I know, I know, I know. They're, they're not my brother. Stop looking at it in that, that juvenile way of looking at things it's an analogy so pretend that you understand the analogy and think that that's your brother stop trying to make your brother pay and forgive your brother so that you can receive tax credits ladies and gentlemen i really have been trying to get all of you to understand this for years now and it's it is getting tiring. I mean, we have the people who get the sat packs. I had a gentleman do a consult with me. He's an Omega sat packer. 
What you don't realize, those of you, especially those of you who are Omega Sat Packers or Prime Sat Packers, the Prime Sat Pack will be there until, pay attention, the end of January. Then that program will cease. When you purchase a Prime or an Omega Pack, the Plus also has tax credits, but it doesn't have the arbitration attached. But when you purchase the Sat Pack or Omega Pack, pay attention, please. What happens, ladies and gentlemen, is that you get an automatic tax credit. Automatic? Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't kick in until the day. I mean, you automatically get it. You've automatically purchased it. You just don't receive the transfer documents until what's stated on the website. But you get the automatic tax credits. You don't have the tax credits. This is not as a result of a debt. So you don't have to send out no debt letters and wait no 80 days or 90 days. Ladies and gentlemen, the contract itself will come with a dollar amount. The arbitrator will award you that, not because you have a contract with the organization SACOM, but they'll award you that and they will document the fact that those things in the contract are what they are. Okay, we're going to start handling the Omega and Prime sat packs in January. I remember the only thing about those is the individuals who have the Omega and Prime sat packs, you don't have to worry about anything else other than receiving the tax credits. Okay, you don't have to worry about sending it to anybody else. These are trust agreements. These credits are what is to support your trust. You all need to understand if you have a trust, the trust should be funded. You should be able to use those credits to offset debts. You should be able to use those credits for bail. If anybody ever came at you and gave you a bail, you should be able to use the tax credits and put them in the court registry to satisfy any bail requirements because they are the same as cash. I want all of you to understand, many of you are trying to contact SACOM asking them for an explanation of this. Ladies and gentlemen, SACOM is not there to give you an explanation of this stuff. It's not SACOM's job to give you an explanation of this. SACOM's job is to offer the package. It is your job to know what you're doing. Okay? The basic information is on the website. Many people are trying to call SACOM or trying to communicate with SACOM to get specific information because they have a specific situation. You're going to have to deal with that on your own. SACOM is not there to handle that for you. We only, as an organization, and I, I say we now, because remember, my videos have nothing to do with SACOM, but only as an organization does SACOM provide this avenue for people. They only are providing a service. They are not providing any type of consult, any type of assistance in helping you better understand anything. Your understanding is your understanding. So they put the information on the site for your benefit. Please understand, all of our SAP packers are investors. That's why you guys are receiving tax credits. Here's the problem. We have some of the older SAP packers, and we told you guys we were going to be adding to your packs over the years so that you would receive the benefit. Many of you simply didn't understand what you were receiving. You didn't understand that you were investing in the organization. And so you're thinking that you were to have received more than what you've already received. If you have your EIN number, if you have your 98 number, if you have your CPN, if you, and not all of you got CPNs, if you have your UCC filing, if you have your registering of your documents with the county recorder, ladies and gentlemen, you received exactly what was promised. The tax credits are in addition. So those of you who are waiting and waiting and waiting, you are going to 
have to wait until I finish training the people so that they can understand what they're doing so it's done right. And we're doing that now. We've been working on that for the last two months and we are getting to the point to where we're going to be producing the documents. But be patient with me because this is not the normal process. Take a look. Nobody else is doing this, ladies and gentlemen. And anybody else who is attempting to do it is only copying from what they're hearing on these videos. Okay? This information is not out there in the public. So I do want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen. And an hour and 30 minutes roughly is what this video would be. Going from beginning to end is to your benefit. Some of you, in order to understand what you're doing, why you're doing it, and why you can, oh, here's the thing, you can only get one prime sat pack. You can only get one omega sat pack. You cannot get a prime and an omega and a plus sat pack. You can only get one sat pack in this new series. You cannot have two of them. You can get one for your wife. You can get one for your son. You can get one for the family. But you, as a person, each individual, each entity can only get one sat pack. Again, the tax credits are automatic. That's what you're purchasing. Wait, are you saying you guys are selling tax credits? By the way, go ahead and look up, because that's what the individual was calling me. He wanted to know what could he do with the sat pack credits, or not sat pack credits, but with the tax credits. And so I showed him how he could not only sell the tax credits, but that he could use the tax credits to offset debts. And we went on Google, and Google showed him where he could sell his tax credits, where he could purchase tax credits. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you all who get the SAP packs have been purchasing tax credits from us. That's what you've been doing. Sorry, I'm going to have to take care of this later, too. Just make sure everything, okay, I've already taken ownership. Just want to make sure, and it's going to be a lot of scrambling. See, watch. You're going to see a lot of, okay, that right there. All right, I'm just taking control of some things. Need to, need to be in control. Janet Jackson, because that's what I want to do. Control. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Please understand that everything that I've seen when I say I was there up until the point of its occurrence has happened so far. The only thing I haven't seen is what was going on in India where they were bodies were piling up on the street, rotting and decaying. Ladies and gentlemen, I assure you that that's what I've seen. Where they were using dogs when people went into restaurants, they were using dogs. Can you imagine a dog being in a restaurant? Yes, they're going to make it provisional so that they can use a dog inside a restaurant to determine if someone is infected or not. When they said that COVID is here for the duration, they didn't lie. Ladies and gentlemen, what I can promise you is this thing is going to get out of control. They are not going to, they think they have it under control. They think that they can stop it. Ladies and gentlemen, they have created a monster. And this monster is going to get away from them. That's what I've seen. They think they know better. They think they understand the science. Ladies and gentlemen, they have no clue. They think that they can stop this from Okay, we'll do this and that'll eradicate it. Ladies and gentlemen, this thing is going to mutate and mutate and mutate to the point that it's out of control. And the only problem is it's going to mutate and mutate and mutate because they're not going to be able to stop the mutations. It's going to keep mutating to the point where it's going to annihilate just about every single creature on this planet. And that's when the scriptures say somebody's going to have to step in. Because if it was not for him stepping in, no flesh would survive. Go back and read Matthew, the 24th chapter, verse 20 and 21.
please understand that it has to get to the point where no flesh would survive. And if you look at the fact that they're talking about this virus mutating and then the next mutation and next mutation, they know that it's going to get out of control. But they somehow think that they can control it. Ladies and gentlemen, they cannot control this because what if they do? They created something which is not natural. Corona is not natural coronavirus. It's not natural in the environment. This thing is going to get out of control. And when it does, we have a little bit of time. But those of you utilize tax credits, get the tax credits now before they do the reset. If you only have $50 in the bank, if you did the tax credits the correct way and forgave your neighbors and started documenting your debts and started forgiving those debts and getting the tax credits the way the law says, you would find that you are a whole lot more richer than what you ever imagined to be. Okay. Can I use the tax credits to buy a car? First, understand tax credits first, and then we'll start talking about acquiring property with tax credits. Okay. Then we'll start talking about using tax credits to pay for this or pay for that. Understand tax credits first. I've been talking about tax credits since April, telling all of you about tax credits. This is the system. Credits, whether they're tax credits issued by the government, because you can only get a tax credit from the government. You cannot get a tax credit from any place else. If you get it from someplace like SACOM, that's because they received it from the government. Pay attention. And carrying forward and carrying forward, what SACOM has done with my tax credits, we've documented all of them before the end of the year. That's why we're asking you to be patient for us to do the assignment. We had to document them before the end of the year so that we could do what? carry them forward into next year pay attention everyone now that we carry them forward into the next year now when we give them to people they don't have to worry about having them last year or the year before they have them the current year and when they file their taxes since the accounts were previous they can carry them forward because that's what we've done for each party. It's a little complicated. I know it's kind of difficult. Well, if you're not giving them to us until next year. No, you already received them. You just haven't received the documentation yet, but you are carrying them forward. And once you receive them, you can document the time that you acquired these credits whenever you purchase the side pack and you just carry them forward. You can carry them forward for up to seven years. Okay, it has not been seven years. Just be patient with us. We're trying to get this done. We're gonna to try to take care of as many of you as possible. Okay, we're gonna to try to take care of as many of you as possible as soon as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, an hour and 28 minutes and I only got up because the dogs had to go I have these two dogs, ladies and gentlemen. The boy, if he doesn't remind me of me, he doesn't bark. When he's got to go, he doesn't bark. So you know what he does? He jumps up, pounces, and pats his feet on the ground and runs in a circle. But I'm asleep. So how do I know? Well, I don't, even though I sleep there, I'm listening to it now in the background. I sleep with audio playing of scripture or talks given by circuit overseers of Jehovah's Witnesses. And with that in my background, it's not up too loud because I don't keep it up loud so I can hear if there's something going on. And I heard him in the restroom and I get up because I'm trying to figure out what he's doing. And I come out and I'm looking and he's been jumping up and down in the restroom trying to get my attention. So I said, come on, put his leash on, and he certainly had to go. He doesn't talk, but he knows enough to get my attention, and that's the best way he knows how. He knows how to bark. He barks when he needs to, but he doesn't bark when he needs to do that. She barks when she whines. She doesn't bark. She whines when she needs to go. So we're getting to know each other, okay? They're my buddies. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, eventually I'll give you guys some pictures of them. But for now, thank you for letting me share this with you. I told you about an hour and 30 minutes, didn't I? Got to go. Take care of yourselves, everybody. Oh, and I was about to hit the wrong button. I got to hit the red button, not the X. Bye-bye.